Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, we're gonna be tearing down and taking a closer look at the new Lungzi Airlite B101 Air HG. So I did have a chance to uh, take this reel out and uh, cast it a bit. And I will say that it does cast very well. Uh, the dynamic inductor rotor setting does work very well. If you make it so that it travels and it has the most amount of dynamic travel distance, it does reduce backlashes quite a bit. And then the furthest arrested or furthest away from the braking mechanism, the uh, magnetic brakes uh, and arrested dynamic setting, you will get a lot more backlashes. So it's more for uh, advanced casters, but you do get a little bit more distance out of that. I found that a setting of out of five different settings, that a setting of three, the very middle one, was a good balance of distance and uh, ease of casting. But anyways, I wanted to show you guys how you actually can adjust the rotor system. And so you can see here, I have a good amount of travel and that's because I am on setting three. What I wanna show you is basically there are three little tabs, a so one, two, and three. So where those three tabs are, when you're out fishing, it's the easiest to use your fingernail. Now, I, I don't really like doing that, but that's what they recommend. So there's one, two, three little tabs, and you can use any of those to kind of get purchase on the uh, white plastic ring. And if you'll notice, if you look inside, there's like a little, almost like a little, like a plateau or a table shape, but that is actually the uh, mechanism that moves. And so in order to set it if you set it to the right, fully to the right, then what happens is you get the least amount of travel. So that's the fully arrested setting. If you make it go all the way to the left, so you just take it again, move your fingernail and move it to the left or counterclockwise, then you get the most amount of travel, right? And you're probably getting about two millimeters worth of travel in the, uh, the rotor system. So that's how the uh, the system is adjusted and that's how it works. When you have the most amount of travel, what happens is when the spool is spinning the fastest, the rotor actually travels into the side plate where all the magnets are and it gives you the most braking effect. So it's, it's very beginner friendly when you have it uh, at the most amount of travel, but you do reduce some casting distance. Uh, I wasn't able to really, you know, measure how much you reduce the casting distance by, but you know, if I were to guess, it would probably be around like five to 10 feet or so. But that being said, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier to cast, you know, really hard because it's very, very uh, backlash resistant. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and start with bearing sizes. And so in order to go ahead and remove, and also I need to get some measurements because last time I did not get measurements for you guys. And so hopefully you guys can see this is gonna be the overall spool weight with the bearing on it. And let's see if we can get it to stop moving. So I'm getting a measurement of 8.23 grams and that is the spool weight. And then we'll go ahead and get some measurements on the diameter. So and that should be a 34 millimeter spool. And yes, it is. That's the most, the outermost diameter is coming in at 33.95. So that's basically 34. And then the inner diameter is coming in at about 28.87. So that's about a 29. So it is a fairly large diameter spool. And because of that, I, I kind of attribute this reel to more of like a, a longer distance casting and reel and it's more, favorable to have you know kind of heavier lures I'm, I'm talking about like maybe two three four five gram lures maybe even higher Lungzi does rate this reel for up to 10 grams and i'm wondering if it actually will go higher than that but uh, i have not tested that yet anyways so those are the measurements for the spool itself and i will i'll go ahead and disassemble a spool for you guys but i'm going to get some gloves first Okay, back. Um, all right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and most likely upgrade and swap out these two ceramic, orange seal ceramic ball bearings because they're quite loud actually on casting. I do have a casting video. I'm not sure if this the casting video is gonna come out before this teardown, but if you go watch that video, you can you can hear, hopefully you can hear the sound that it makes. And it's, you know, it's a pretty standard sound for, um, 
ceramic bearings, but I'm not the biggest fan. Now, let me show you guys something. When you do take out these uh, spool pins, you want to kind of be paying attention because one, typically speaking, one of the sides of the spool pin itself is going to be slightly larger, or that can be the case. And so if you do see kind of a size difference in the diameter of the spool pin itself, then what you want to do is you want to push out the spool pin from the side that is thinner. And that's because it's kind of acting like a wedge. And so that's what I'm actually going to go, go ahead and do here. And so this tool that I'm using is a spool pin removal tool. And it's basically a little press, a screw press. Uh, okay, so I've gone ahead and I've removed the, the spool pin itself. Oops. And so what you see now, I don't know if you guys can see that, is there's actually a C-clip there. And that's a that's kind of a new thing to me. I've never actually seen that before on on a spool. I would have preferred to see an O-ring instead because an O-ring would be easier to remove and probably lighter weight. Although you know you're probably not gonna it's not gonna add you know all that much weight to everything. But still, it's weight. And uh, this tool that I've got here is actually specifically designed to remove C-clips. It's a tool made by a company called Dynamite. And I bought it for, you know, smaller C-clips, but this is a fairly large one. And this one is using a 2.0 millimeter size. Okay, so I was successful in getting these, this uh, bearing off and I'll get a size for you guys right now. So the outer diameter of this bearing is going to be 11 millimeters. The inner diameter is going to be approximately five millimeters because it's coming in at a 4.9. And then the thickness is coming in at 3.95, so it's gonna be a four. So 11, 11 millimeter outer diameter. I think it's a five millimeter inner diameter. Yeah, five millimeter inner diameter. And then a three, nope, four millimeter width. So that is the size of the spool bearing itself. And I just so happen to have a spare Roro BFS T bearing lying around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap that now. I just don't like how orange seals are so loud. And so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this. So you're gonna, you're gonna have to reinstall this little C-clip to keep things in place. And I may actually look for um, an O-ring to replace this C-clip because C-clips are not things that I enjoy installing or removing, especially on camera because they are not the easiest to work with. Okay, so let's see if I can't reinstall this. There we go. Wow, this tool makes it, do it, it does make a, a difference in, in removal, but it doesn't really work on like super micro C-clips, but not bad. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the pin itself. And you wanna install the smaller side first if, if your spool pin is tapered. Sometimes they're not, sometimes they're not. And so the way you do this is basically you line it up. And sometimes, keep in mind that sometimes these uh, spool pin removal tools will actually not be compatible with your spool. It just all kind of depends because if you notice, they have this uh, kind of stepped inner, almost like a like a circle. But sometimes that actually doesn't really line up with your spool. And then also the offset of where the actual spool pin is uh, in comparison to the edge of the spool, it doesn't always line up perfectly. So there are other uh, spool pin removal tools. Like for example, the Daiwa SSRTW, I had to actually purchase a um, an SLP Works uh, specifically designed spool pin removal tool for that reel. Kind of a kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so when you do reinstall it, you wanna make sure that both sides of the spool pin are equidistant from the center. And so it's not like favoring or biased towards one side more. Anyways, that's gonna be the spool itself. I've gone ahead and swapped out the bearing on that. And then now we're gonna go ahead and remove the, uh, the bearing from the side plate. I do need a replacement for that. Unfortunately, I don't have a Roro bearing for that one. And to do this, there is a spring clip inside, and let me go ahead and show you guys. There's two arms. I use my forceps and I push in, while I keep my thumb on the main body of the clip itself, I push in on one side, and then I will go ahead and pull out the pin itself, or the clip itself, I'm sorry. All right, so to remove the bearing, I have this really handy Roro bearing removal tool. And all you do is you find 
the size that will go into the inner diameter and then you just kind of press fit it in there and it'll pop right out. So let's get a size on this bearing. That one's gonna be a 10 outer diameter followed by a 2.83, so it's a three, so a 10 by three by 3.96, so 10 by three by four size bearing. So that's a more standard size that you see. All right, to reinstall, you just press fit your bearing back and then you can, what I like to do is I like to seat one of these, uh, the arms of the clip and then just kind of hold it there. Then I'll take my forceps and I'll kind of just gently manipulate it. You are gonna put some tension on that spring, so be very careful not to lose it. And, uh, and then if you see something like this, where you know one of the arms has kind of gone into the bearing itself, you just reposition, use your forceps to kind of re-manipulate everything and just make sure that every part of that spring clip is actually seated in the groove that it's supposed to go in. Okay, so that is the side plate. Now let's get to the uh, the meat and potatoes of this reel. So uh, Lumzi actually provides a spanner wrench and the spanner wrench is what you do need to use to take off this handle. But if you'll notice, there's kind of this, uh, these little tiny pins in a, in a, in a, like a five, a number five dice pattern. And that is actually for removal of your handle knobs. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and center everything on the handle knob cap. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the handle knob apart because I am not a fan of these and I'd like to know the sizes for future reference. And then the cap will come off as a, uh, a threaded cap. So that's pretty nice. And then what you're left with is a uh, Phillips screw. And so we'll go ahead and remove that. All right, so there's the screw itself. And then you just remove the handle Go ahead and measure the bearings. And there's it doesn't seem like there's anything super special about the rest of the handle itself. There is another identical bearing and a shim underneath. Oh, two shims. So like I said before, the handles themselves are actually shimmed very well. I had one that was uh, one handle was ever so slightly, had a little bit more slop in it than the other one, but the outer diameter is a seven on this. I bet you this is gonna be a seven by four by 2.5. Inner diameter is four, and then width is 2.5. Yeah, so a pretty standard uh, handle bearing size. And then the length of the handle shaft itself is coming in at about 20, 26.97, so that's gonna be about a 27 millimeter shank length. So that's gonna be that. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Okay, to reassemble, you put the shims back on first. You put one of the bearings down. You put then the, what you can do is you can put the other bearing in the, the cap side of the handle, and then you reinsert. You need to reseat that bearing and then we'll go ahead and put our screw back in, which this can be a pain sometimes, especially if the threaded part of that handle shank is pretty far recessed into the handle itself. Luckily on this one, it doesn't seem very far, but me doing this on camera does not make it any easier. And in fact, it makes it much more difficult to do for me at least. Let's see if we can get this to want to listen. Okay, so there's that. I did have some coffee earlier, so I'm a bit jittery right now. But you can't really function without coffee, can you? Okay. So somehow I lost, ended up losing one of the shims, but I'm gonna end up swapping these uh, handle knobs out anyways. So I'm not really concerned about that right now, but that's one of the reasons why you should work in a very clutter-free area. And if you guys saw the rest of my my little workbench, you would <laughs> you would see that it's not very clutter-free. What you only what you guys see on camera is not the whole picture. Okay, so 
that is now put together. Let's go ahead and start removing the handle itself. And in order to do that, you do need a flathead screwdriver. So there's one retaining screw right there. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. So we'll set that aside. And now we're gonna go ahead and use the spanner wrench. And the reason why you need this is because of the way that the Sorry, that's the uh, retaining clip, but the way that this bolt is actually recessed into the handle. So they've kindly provided you with an offset spanner wrench in order to remove that. And because this is a left-handed, it's going to be righty Lucy. Oh, nope. Lefty Lucy. Okay. So that's actually kind of nice. Um, Yeah, maybe it's been a while since I've actually removed a locking bolt. This is actually a bolt and not a nut. So that's another little bit of a difference. And you'll see this kind of style in like Daiwa's like to use these bolts. And there is, it looks like, oops, everything's falling apart on me. There is a little plastic washer underneath this. So be sure not to lose that because it's a, a very thin, clear plastic washer, if you can see that right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And then what was under that was this flat, larger washer. And then underneath that is going to be a spring washer. And I'm not the biggest fan of this design because everything, as you just saw, just kind of fell out there. Usually you'll see all of uh, this this flat washer and the spring washer underneath the star drag, but in this case, uh, it was not underneath the uh, the star drag. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm putting the spool back in so that I can get a little bit of uh, resistance on the star drag itself. And so we'll go ahead and start removing that. And to remove that, you need to go counterclockwise on a left-handed model. And uh, let's take a look at this star drag. So everything is. This is fully machined out of aluminum. There is a washer inside of it, a flat one. So we'll go ahead and take that out. I'll put that right there next to the rest of this. But you can see how it's uh, got a bunch of flutes on the inside of this uh, star drag. And so that's actually what makes the, the star drag clicking sound. And then we've got the actual spring that makes the sound and it does have it should have two yeah it's got the two spring washers and those are going to be inside resting inside on the uh the little spring the little leaf spring there is then another flat washer very very thin and then I believe that looks like it and so just looking at the uh the machining it does look very clean the threads look very clean. Uh, I do see just a little bit of leftover aluminum shavings. So hopefully they can you know, work on cleaning that up. And now we can go ahead and remove the spool. I don't need that anymore. We'll set aside our provided spanner wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the spool tension cap. And inside of this one, it's fluted but there's also a anti-friction washer in the very bottom. So be sure not to lose that. I'm just gonna set that aside right here. And uh, we've got a spool tension shaft right there. It looks like a nylon material. And then you've got this uh, like leaf spring, but it's like already resting inside the frame itself. And that's kind of a nice touch because then you don't really lose it. But uh, at the same time, don't take it out because then you will lose it. All right, so let's get into the main body of the reel. And what I see is a bunch of, a couple of torque screws. So there's one right here, there's one resting right there, and then there's another third one right there, followed up with uh, two Phillips style screws. So we'll go ahead and remove those Phillips screws and then we'll work on the torques. Wow, these are in there really good. Okay, so when you're up against a screw that is that feels like it's almost frozen inside and you feel like the uh, your screwdriver is going to slip, 
I would suggest not either f making sure that you've got the right size screwdriver, but you can also give it uh, like a tiny turn to tighten it and that might free it up. And so I'm actually slipping on that. That's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to see if I can size up on my, my Phillips, but I may not have, <laughs> may not have something that works. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. So sizing up really helped with that one. It made, made it very, very easy to take out. So I should have, I should have, as soon as I saw that, backed off and then just broke out the uh, the correct size screwdriver. All right, so let's go ahead and find the uh, the Torx sizes for this, and they do all look to be identical. So it looks like they are a T10. So a T10, and I hope, I hope that I'm able to actually access these with this screwdriver. So it looks like I can get to one, <laughs> but maybe, may not be able to do this without an actual dedicated torque screwdriver which is kind of unfortunate all right so i may be at a bit of an impasse here but i'm gonna try doing this anyways and uh i don't advise that you guys do this on your reels at all so let's see if we can't work something out here okay i can definitely an access this one from the side. So that's good. I can access number two from the inside of the reel. Um, yep. So that's good. And these screws are all identical, so that's very nice. And then let's see if I can access this third one. I can definitely access it but yeah, I, I do think I need to get a dedicated long shaft Torx screwdriver set. And actually that one is a little bit different. i put the reel down right there. So one of them is a slightly longer length and that screw came out of the bottom, bottom location of the inner three screws. So just keep that in mind that there are different lengths when you're uh, going to put this together again. All right, so let's get into the main gearbox. We're gonna lift this straight off. And so here we are, let's lift this over. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this anti-reverse bearing sleeve. And it is keyed. And so I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but it is keyed, which is very, very nice because I think that is what helps and allows the handle to not have any kind of slop in the side to side movement, but also the in and out movement along the uh, axis of the uh, main shaft. But what I see, which is actually really cool, is that there is a C-clip almost. You can see that clip moving around inside of there. And that C-clip is retaining this anti-reverse bearing uh the spool tension bearing is also you know clipped in which is you know pretty standard but would you look at that machining on the side here i mean those are some really really small passes i'm not an expert on machining so if you guys are out there uh you know does that look pretty good because it looks pretty good to me um the material itself the uh, side plate material let's see how thick it is we're only talking a thickness of about one millimeter so they've removed quite a bit of material and i think that that's how they're getting this super lightweight uh reel at uh, 140 grams which is which is pretty you know this is a fully cnc reel there's no you know hybrid inner carbon frame material this is this is entirely made out of aluminum okay so let me go ahead and take out the main gear Very nice. Okay, so let's just take a look at this and see what we can see. So this um, this clicker mechanism also has a nice washer. So that's really great to see because I think that also helps to remove any and reduce any slop 
There is the anti-reverse ratchet gear. So we're gonna go ahead, oops. We're gonna go ahead and take that off. And there is a, a carbon tex washer and it is nicely greased. So that's something that you normally don't see on CDM reels uh, and some Japanese reels as well. I tend to not see them being uh, greased in any sort of way. So that is really nice. Uh, you can kind of see that the main gear itself also has a very thin layer of grease. It looks like it's yellow in color, so most likely lithium grease, which is really great to see. And the drag clicker mechanism does hide another carbon text washer underneath, which we'll go ahead and take out. So there is the clicker mechanism. It is using the, you know what? This is the first uh, drag clicker mechanism that uses this leaf spring style that sounds good to me. It sounds almost like what Daiwa's got with their little tiny, uh, like their little cam and spring design. But this is a design that I've seen more and more commonly used now. And I don't really like the sound of it because it sounds really hollow. But on this reel, it sounds really good. So kudos to Lungzi for tuning it the way that they've done uh, because it sounds really good. And then we've got a flute ring in there. And then it looks like, I can't really tell and I don't really wanna take it apart, but it looks like if you guys can see, there's like a toothed ring on the inside underneath this uh, flute ring. And I'm wondering if that's another C-clip to hold in this uh, carbon text washer, which also feels greased as well. So, you know, if that's the case, that is really, really cool. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see, I don't know if my camera's focusing, but the main gear does look machined very well. So that's really good to see. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, rest of the reel, the pinion and the yoke. I'm gonna go ahead and take the yoke and set that aside. I'm already losing parts. So there's the other spring. And let me go ahead and clean this off really quickly. And um, you know, what I'll do is I'll go, what I do when I'm, you know, tearing these reel down, reels down is I'm basically doing an almost like a, a pre-tune service. Um, you know, I clean up any gunk that I see, but this actually doesn't look very bad at all. And then I just wanna show you guys the machining on the pinion itself. It does look like there's a bit of a shoulder there, which is really nice to see because that's where uh, the bearing will the pinion bearing will rest and make contact with and yeah the machining looks really really good to me so yep very nice and then let's take a look at the body wow this is so light this part right here uh where's my scale let me just measure this really quickly because this this portion itself is extremely lightweight to me 45.87 grams. I don't have anything to like, you know, uh, kind of make a reference to, but this frame, the main frame itself, you know, it still has some extra parts on there. Super light, super lightweight. I mean, that's, that's really impressive. There are some thinner parts right here. This looks like it's a, a plate that's um, sc actually screwed on. There is a little Phillips screw underneath the uh, main gear cog. So, that is pretty cool to see. And I think you would access, yeah, so the, the main gear cog just pops off. It is keyed and so, you know, you can put it back on easily. And the main shaft itself does, does not have any play in and out along the axis. It does have a little bit of uh, play side to side, but I think, you know, the keyed portion of the anti-reverse bearing sleeve helps a lot with keeping that together. And then let's go ahead and we'll go further into the reel. Let me see if I can, yeah, I think by removing these two screws that are right next to the main gear shaft, we can actually take off this uh, little tiny plate. So two screws there. And then this hopefully should just pop right off, but it doesn't seem like it wants to. So 
So let's see. Interesting. All right, so I'm not gonna force anything right now, but because it is loose, it you know it definitely can be removed. I'm gonna take out these two screws right here next to the worm gear, and then we'll see if uh, can't free anything up that way. I'm gonna move these screws aside. Put those right there. The main gear or the main shaft is also ported, which is nice to see. Very nice touch. Okay, so that's the key right there. And um, yeah, so that was the key to removing this. And underneath here, there is another bearing, which is very nice. And uh, this is the outside bottom where you see the serial number. So that's pretty cool. And not much slop. So it is shimmed fairly well on this. It, there, there is a little bit of play in there, but that's okay because everything is held in place by screws. And so there's not gonna be any movement on that part. So we'll go ahead and put that down. And then the this little tiny this little tiny plate right here was keeping everything together. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, and then the worm shaft can pop out. And there is another bearing at the end of the worm shaft, though. So that is that's going to be a 12 plus one ball bearing reel. So very cool. The construction, I want to say the construction of this, this reel itself is actually really top quality. I mean, I don't see any other, you know, like leftover shavings from the manufacturing process. Everything is machined really well. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see all the machining marks that are kind of in like swirls and whatnot, but yeah, very impressive to actually hold the frame itself and be so lightweight. I'm not going to tear the reel down any further. I don't think I need to really take apart the worm gear or anything like that. Uh, if you guys are really interested in the future, then I can definitely go ahead and do so. But yeah, very impressive on the construction of this reel. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together and, uh, you know, add some of my own grace where, uh, where I see fit. But yeah, Good job, Lungzi. This is this is a really well-made reel. I, I don't I don't have a conquest to compare to, but I have opened up a uh, a Daiwa Millionaire, and I would say that uh, this is maybe like ninety percent of the qu uh, construction quality of the Daiwa Millionaire. And new the Daiwa Millionaire was a very very expensive reel, uh, a lot more expensive than this reel. So with that being said, I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, were you guys impressed by the internals? If you have any questions about any of these parts or yeah, any, any questions about the reel itself, please go ahead and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer you. I, I pride myself in answering all of your guys' comments and I really love having conversations with you guys. If you like the video, consider giving a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, it really uh, helps the channel grow. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.